One of the questions that religions across the world and across history have tried to answer is where do we go when we die? And we have many different answers for this according to the different religions from around the world. But another question, and the question I want to answer and discuss today, is what is the meaning of life? And just as religions have tried to answer where do we go when we die, religions have also tried to answer this question of what is the meaning of life. To Christianity, it might be to live a godly life in order to go to heaven and live as sin-free as possible. And to Buddhists, it's to reach enlightenment. But what is this for Norse paganism? Or what was it for the people of the Viking Age and before the Viking Age? So that is what we're going to be exploring today as we hike this trail up to Lily Mountain behind me here. So we'll be ending it somewhere up there. And we'll be answering the question of what is the meaning of life according to Norse paganism. And no, I don't believe it's 42. Now, without a doubt, the most helpful source when searching for this answer to this question is going to be the Poetic Edda, and specifically the Havamal contained within the Poetic Edda. So the Havamal, for anyone who doesn't know, is the words of the High One, or in other words, the words of Odin. And so this really is like the advice section for all of, you know, the poetic and Norse mythology and all these things. Uh, it's actually probably the most religious work contained within uh, the Poetic Edda and, and really any source material we have because it's really advice for life. And so, of course, I think we're going to find the answer to what is the meaning of life in here. Well, let's take a step back for a moment. So let's say there was 100 people walking on this trail, and I talked to every single one of them, and I asked them the question of what is the meaning of life according to the Vikings, or what do they think the meaning of life would be according to the Vikings? I guarantee you almost every single one of those people would say, well, it's glory in Valhalla, oh, it's death in battle, oh, it's raiding, pillaging, drinking, feasting, living in excess, and all these things. And uh, yeah, I could definitely say with much confidence majority of people would say that. But in reality, the answer is actually the opposite of these things. Uh, because whatever you find in the have all kind of talks about not doing this, about living a life of moderation, about living a life of peace, uh, about living a life of, you know, just happiness and friendship. And so that's what we're going to really be digging into here. Uh, but I really wanted to share that with you because I think there is this misconception that Norse paganism is this Viking religion. Of course, this is something I talk about on this channel all the time. Uh, but really, when looking at that question of what is the meaning of life, I really do think that we find there is a big difference between what is probably the you know, stereotype of the meaning of life to the Vikings, and then what is really the answer. So of course, most of the people living in the Viking age were not Vikings, were not raiders or warriors, and the majority of people that lived before these people, the pre-Christian people of Scandinavia and Germania, um, they're not warriors. They weren't warriors. They were just farmers, people living their lives. So I really do think that when you read the have all it's more from the perspective of people living life rather than people being warriors or kings or these big important people. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dig into the have all and find the meaning of life. I kid you not, I almost just got caught by a spider itself. Like, look at this. Oh gosh, I can't even get my phone through it. There's a web right there and it goes across this entire trail. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a man needs wisdom if he plans to wander widely. Life is easier at home. He'll be laughed at if he sits among the wise. A man is happy if he finds praise and friendship within himself. You can never be sure of where you stand in someone else's mind. So these come from stanzas five and eight within the have all So really early on, I mean, you have the whole thing with, you know, looking around before you enter a room, you never know who lies within. And this really focuses on self-reliance. Now, this is something I definitely think a lot of people like about Norse paganism, the Viking lifestyle, is this idea of taking care of yourself. You know, being, you know, able to feed yourself, clothe yourself, house yourself. In fact, there's a line later on talking about the importance of having a roof over your head uh, and how that's one of the simple pleasures in life that you should need and want for. And that not having a roof over your head is one of the worst things that can happen to you. And so this idea of, you know, being able to take care of yourself, I think is one of those components to the keys of life. Um, and the reason I wanted to put it in here, because it's, you know, again, something that people find very useful in these days of being self-reliant, but also because it's the first thing that have all mentions. And so I definitely think this was something that was important to the pre-Christian people of Scandinavia and Germany. And so this, I think, is one of the keys to unlocking what is the meaning of life. And I definitely think that first key is self-reliance. Say hello to my spider stick. I have never seen so many spider webs in my life. I don't think anyone's hiked this trail in so long. Oh my gosh. Literally, I kid you not, it's like every five or ten feet, there's another massive web. I'm trying to like move them out of the way the best I can, but there's just so many of them. There is not as much good as men claim there is an alcohol for one's well-being. A man knows less as he drinks more and loses more and more of his wisdom. 
Don't hold on to the mead horn, but drink your fair share. Say something useful or stay quiet, and no one else will judge you poorly if you go to sleep early. Even cows know when they should go home and leave behind the fields, but an unwise man does not know the measure of his own appetite. Now, I think this one is one of the most important parts of this entire conversation, because there is this idea of the Viking lifestyle uh, that to be a Norse pagan, you have to live to excess. You have to drink a lot, you have to eat a lot, you have to fight a lot, you have to live life to the extreme. But yet here in the Havamal, it talks about living life in moderation, even when it comes to alcohol. Again, this is one of those things that's like, oh, it's Vikings, you know, you Vikings drink. Oh yeah, it's just called brother and all these things. But right here in the Havamal, it says live in moderation, drink in moderation, eat in moderation. And I think this is a really important key to life. And I have found that out personally myself. And I think you read any self-help book or, you know, listen to anyone's advice in this modern era, and they're going to mention moderation uh, and doing everything a little bit and not doing anything to the extreme. You can't have too much of a good thing. And that's really what the have all is saying here. This is what Odin is saying here. And so I think one of those keys in the, to, to the meaning of life is living life in moderation. Yes, enjoy it. Yes, partake. But no one to go to bed early. No one to stop drinking and no one to stop eating. I should also add at this point, you know, no one is perfect. And the goal of being a Norse pagan, the goal of finding the meaning of life is not perfection. And I think that's one of the problems some religions have or some uh, philosophies have is the goal of life is not perfection because we are imperfect beings. But one of the things I really like about Norse paganism and Norse mythology is that the gods are not perfect. And I think you really get that in the tone of the Havamal as Odin is talking about this wisdom is that he has made mistakes. In fact, I think he even admits a couple of times that he has had failures, that he has made mistakes, but has learned from them. And that is one of the biggest things here too, is that learning from your mistakes. It's okay to fall off the wagon. It's okay uh, to not be perfect. But what is important is understanding that you went too far, understanding that you have to turn back. So really from my own personal experiences and from the experiences of what it sounds like Odin, the second key to finding the meaning of life is living life in moderation. Also, hey, if you like this video, think about liking and subscribing and all that good stuff because there's tons of videos on this channel, very similar to this one, where I take you on a beautiful hike and we discuss Norse pagan related topics. But also, if you appreciate the work I do and appreciate the fact that I am sweating to death in the Kentucky humidity and the fact that I have to carry all this stuff, the tripod, I got my drum in there because I'm filming this at the same time as the shaman video. If you appreciate the work I put into this content, please think about donating to Patreon. It's the only way I'm able to do this full time and make these videos for you. Uh, so if you want to become a part of the Patreon community, join our community discord, uh, have live streams, early access videos, and maybe get sneak peeks of the book I'm writing, uh, please think about going down below and supporting me there. Truly, none of this would be possible without the people on Patreon. So to everyone on there, thank you so very much, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video. Be a friend to your friend and repay each gift with a gift. Repay laughter with laughter. Repay treachery with treachery. It's a long and crooked walk to a bad friend, even if he lives nearby. But it's an easy road to a good friend, no matter how long the journey. Friends should provide their friends with weapons and clothing. This kind of generosity shows. Generous mutual giving is a key to a lifelong friendship. I was young once. I walked alone, and I became lost on my way. I felt like I was rich when I met another traveler. People's joy is in other people. So the meaning of life may not be 42, but stanza 42, that was pretty good. And I really think this is one of the big components, is friendship. So you have that self-reliance in the very beginning. You have to be self-reliant, of course but you cannot live without friends. Living life alone, living life without you know friendship, without family, without people that you love and the people that you give to and people that give back to you, without these components, life is not worth living. And I can say that without a doubt. Now, maybe that's because I'm a part of the Fellowship of Northern Traditions, you know, a pagan community. I mean, there are hundreds of people across this country that all get together multiple times every year and it's amazing. But now that I have that, I could not imagine life without it. Like, you know, I talk to other people and they're like, oh, you know, I have one or two friends. I'm like, well, you know, I have 40, 50, 60, something like that. And, you know, and then plus just the, all the members in the community that I meet regularly and just enjoy life together and celebrate the season, celebrate the gods. Once, now that I have that, now that I've seen it and I touched it, like I've experienced it, I couldn't imagine life without it. Truly, the joy of people is in other people. And again, these are the Vikings saying this. This is Odin saying this, you know, according to the have them all. This is the words of Odin. And he's saying that you need other people. You need friends. But you also need to be generous to those friends. This was only one of the many lines to talk about generosity. There were several stanzas about gift giving, about sharing with others, repaying gifts with gifts. And not necessarily massive gifts, but even sharing loaves of bread is a great way to win a friend. And this is a philosophy that I live life by. I, any 
anytime I can, I try to buy something for people that I'm with. Or if I haven't seen a friend in a really long time, I make it a point to buy their coffee or buy their beer or buy their meal because I think this is the way that we maintain friendships. This is how, this is how you go years without seeing someone and you're like, wow, it's been so long. Let me buy you dinner. Let me buy you a drink. Um, and that, th those things show, those things hold on for lifetimes. You know, just because you have 800 friends on Facebook doesn't mean anything uh, because, I mean, if you think about it, social media really has made us so disconnected uh, from the people that we follow because we're just like, oh, well, I follow them. That's enough, right? Uh, and I don't think that we follow them enough in real life or follow through with them in real life of buying them drinks, hanging out with them, you know, visiting them and all these things. So really, I think that friendship, gift giving, uh, mutual generosity, all these things, this is one of the biggest components of the meaning of life. So we have a couple more things to talk about and we're really getting to the answer here. There really is a, a line in the have them all that I think is the answer. Uh, and I think all of these things come together to, to influence this. Uh, so we're almost to the top there. I gotta follow this trail. Uh, so let's finish our hike here and finish this discussion on the meaning of life. Hey, you know what my spider stick doesn't protect me against? Big snakes. Better to be alive no matter what than dead. Only the living enjoy anything. I saw a rich man's house, but it was on fire and he lay dead outside the door. A limping man could ride a horse, a handless man can herd, a deaf man can fight and win. It's better to be blind than fuel for the funeral pyre. What can a dead man do? And that right there to me is the meaning of life according to Odin, according to Norse paganism, according to the ancestors, is that life, life is worth living. And that might sound like a stupid answer, but to me, it's the most honest answer because I feel like so many religions are focused on the afterlife or, you know, forgiving yourself or you know, for sins or whatever. But Norse paganism, the beliefs of the ancestors is about living life. Yes, about self-reliance. Yes, about having friends and maintaining friendships. Yes, about living life of moderation. But ultimately, it's about living it. It's about enjoying it. It's about, you know, moving on and experiencing this because once you're past this, it's over. Once this ends, once you're on the funeral pyre, you're dead and you don't get to enjoy things like this beautiful view. You don't get to enjoy a cold shower after a long hike. You don't get to enjoy the feeling of cool mud on your toes. You don't get to just enjoy it. And so, yeah, maybe that's not the answer you were hoping for in this video, but when I was reading the Have Them All, that was the, those were the quotes that stuck out to me. Like, no, that is the meaning. The meaning of life is to live it. And that is amazing, simple, and I would love to live by that for the rest of my life. All these names coming down right here, these are the amazing Patreon supporters that keep this channel going, that can ensure that I come to places like this to get absolutely covered and sweat and hopefully rain in a few moments because that would be lovely. But thank you to everyone on this list. You're amazing. And thank you for joining me for this video and for joining me for this topic. And let me know down below what you think. If you think this kind of coy answer really is the meaning of life according to the Norse pagans or the Vikings. And if it's something that you think you can live your life by. But thank you so much for joining me for this video. And until the haul, Skull.